Hello and welcome to my review of Dirty Unicorns. This is Android 4.4.4, tested on the LG G2 D800 variant. As you can see here, this is the July 14th build, 2014, and it was brought to us by Droid Master. So, Dirty Unicorns, why would you want to use this ROM? Well, uh, the sheer amount of customization built into this ROM is reason enough. Um, I'll go ahead and tell you that I, I had hoped for some better stability with this particular ROM. Uh, I've had a lot of app crashes and uh, nothing that's rebooted the phone though, so no SOD. So that's, that's good. Uh, just a couple app crashes that uh, I haven't gotten on any of these other uh, 4.2 based, uh, kernel based ROMs as of recent. So it's kind of, kind of, I kind of have to believe that it's ROM related, not the app related. Uh, and I'll talk to you more about that later. I did see that there is a 721 build on the actual Dirty Unicorn server, or at least on one of the linked sites for a weekly build, but I could not download it. Try as I might, it would not download. It wouldn't even go to the right page when you click the link, so I don't think that's actually available for us. So this is tested on the 714 build. Why would you want to use Dirty Unicorns, you might ask yourself. Well, the sheer amount of customizations in this ROM and the fact that they're all located right here in one place. Everything's right here. If you want to customize your ROM outside of uh, normal AOSP uh, settings, they're all in one place. You couldn't have asked for an easier way to adjust your settings. Yeah, some might argue, well, display stuff should be in display or sound stuff should be in sound or buttons should be in buttons, which is what a lot of ROMs have been doing. Um, but if you've been doing this for a little while, the customizations you're looking for, to have to go to one place to find them is pretty nice. You don't have to go searching around. So I am a fan. I do like it. And they include um, things like Halo, which uh, are dying off in many other ROMs. And you still have Heads Up as well, which I did test first. I'm currently testing Halo. You can see the, the uh, activation method is, uh, well, you could have seen if I hadn't started using it. It's still there. You also get... Omni switch and the circle app bar. So, and you have app bar as well. All of those work, tested them all. Very, very nice. Um, let's start from the very beginning over here. System UI, notification changes over here. You have your background, you can use custom images, etc. You have uh, some lock screen tweaks over here, shortcuts, theme options. Uh, we could change the handle. Miscellaneous tweaks, here you go, lock screen notifications, they're there, I'm using them, here you go. You got uh, enable disable the camera widget, better in the lock ring, obviously I'm a fan. Slider torch, allow rotation, see through, or blur lock screen, and, and that does work, I used it earlier. Miscellaneous tweaks, we just went through. Power menu, here you go, power menu options, pretty self-explanatory there, quick settings. Got your style right here. All right. Show and drawer, quick settings, pull down, flip tiles, etc. Custom progress bar. You can change the color on that. I've seen that in some other ROMs in the past. It's uh, if you're trying to go for like an all one kind of color type deal, it's pretty nice. Build prop modifications, very nice here um, to be included in one place because you don't have to use apps like Text Droid anymore. You can go right into the settings to change your LCD density. And there are some of the settings here. I did in my testing uh, test both the GPU acceleration enabled and disabled. So as I was trying to troubleshoot this particular ROM. Here are some more of your tweaks. You can zip line your apps, fix permissions. If you don't know what this stuff does, don't mess with it. It will not end well for you. If you do know what you're doing, have at it. Miscellaneous tweaks. Here you go. Really, again, these are all, well, except for down at the bottom, these are so expensive. Breathing SMS, breathing missed call, breathing voicemail, which I had enabled, but then I went to immersive mode, and it doesn't really make a difference because you can't see them. Good job, me. System customizations here. Here's your animations. You can change all these. Okay. Didn't really mess with any of these. Recents. You can use Slim Recents. It'll uh, restart the launcher here. I have tried it out. It does work just fine. Gesture Anywhere, that does work. I tested that out too. Active Display works. Uh, driving Mode works. Uh, weight Clock Blocker, I'm a fan of this. And you'll see here I have some weight clocks blocked. 
and I've really uh, gotten it down to a pretty good understanding of what needs to be blocked in my case anyways uh, to help this phone sleep better um, we'll talk about battery life later identicons obviously if you have uh, it's gonna go through there if you have contacts that don't have icons it'll give them some little identicon things pretty nifty system map remover that's nice to have too and then you got your ad blocker here disable ads etc status bar tweaks here's your battery and clock I'm telling you this thing is chocked full of customizations here we're still going battery bar here you go lots of options here status and bar color stars okay there you go traffic speed indicators for your data weather I have it set up so I can still see it um, here so it's small, it's minimal, it's there. It's nice. Multitasking. This is what I was telling you earlier. All these work. Um, which one you want to use is preference, and you can use more than one as I use am here. Navigation bar. You can change the dimensions. I did. There you go. You can change the height. You can change the width. Have at it. You can change the button layout. And there's your nav ring. All right. And miscellaneous is your download center. You can install this ROM without installing gaps, which is actually what I had to do at first. You'll get errors. At least I did. Install it without installing gaps. You can come to your download center and you can download your gaps from here. And I use the PA gaps. Error. Well, as you can see here, you can also do exposed uh, modular repository, and you can go to the Garrett. So. It's all right there, and that is your settings. Everything else is pretty much the same. Very nice to have them all in one location. Did not test the dark UI because I did not get TDRS uh, compatible gaps, but it's there. And you have the new CM theme engine. All that works. All right, so things I tested with this ROM, I tested Netflix. Netflix worked no problem at all. There was no green bar, no issue like I found, and a few other ROMs where I'd have to slide the navigation bar up and then let it go back away to get the green bar to go away. There was none of that. Netflix just worked. So does YouTube at full screen. Uh, I will say temps on this ROM, as I'll show you here in a little bit, uh, they are a little bit higher. Uh, even when you're doing mundane things such as uh, reading from Pulse or checking out Facebook, it just seems like it gets uh, a little warm, a little fast. Uh, never had it locked down or um, throttled down, so it doesn't get that hot, but it does get hot, noticeably hotter. See if I can't show you some scrolling here. Good old XDA. Once it loads up. If it's gonna load up, there we go. All right, we'll go to this one here. So, your scrolling's pretty responsive here. So, pretty good. Um, I did notice some issues again when it gets warmer, but not a big deal. Prolonged use. Um, you kind of know some stutter a little bit. You do get some launcher redraw. We're going to have to restart the uh, launcher over here. Redraw the launcher over here. And that's kind of annoying because it can do it. Uh, and, of course, it's probably not going to do it for me on camera here. But it'll do it, and it has. Uh, and it's quite annoying. Tethering does work with this ROM. I tested that. It was good. Um, RAM usage, it does kind of swing down the, a little bit of the lower side, uh, except for on a fresh reboot. Um, there's Halo again. And uh, it seemed like I did, uh, it does seem like it does get a little bit of a speed improvement with ART. However, um, unlike usually when I'm on ART, I did notice a significant difference in battery life too. It seemed like the battery life was better on Dalvik for some reason. I'm not really sure why. Your double tap to sleep. And I don't think I enabled. Yeah, there you go. Enabled. Double tap to wake. And you can double tap on the lock screen. Too bad to sleep. I think I'm uh, going a little too quick for it. There we go. Um, Google camera. It's the Google camera. Check out my Mighty ROM review. Uh, eventually, I'll dedicate some time to just talk about that camera and do just a video for that camera. Um, it's not a terrible camera, but I'm not that impressed. I did try to use the uh, camera next for the OnePlus One ROM, 
and unfortunately while I did install it would not open. It wouldn't it could not find my camera hardware. There were no issues with the Play Store. All apps showed up no problem. First time every time I didn't have to do any kind of uh, clearing out of the cache and data of the Play Store so that was nice. Expand desktop as you can see here works. A2DP what can I say? This was a time that it shined. It worked well. It worked first time every time and I did not have any problems with it disconnecting. So my 4 Touch, it was able to uh, utilize the map support and do text messages over the head unit, so that was very welcome, as well as to easily stream over A2DP, decent quality music, I mean, what you come to expect from A2DP, I shouldn't say decent, it's good quality music, uh, and there was no errors, and it did do metadata, so you had your song titles and your artists, etc. Same thing with the Kia Uvo, my text messaging, of course, uh, it did stream the music and share the metadata, and it did it first time, every time, no problem. So let's go through my battery life, and, I'll, and some of these are screen captures of some crashes. Uh, I can say I've had more than six. I stopped taking log cats for them, so uh, they're annoying. This is one where the system UI uh, would just crash. This is me using Facebook and reading some articles on Pulse or Flipboard and uh, 63 degrees Celsius. It's just uh, it's a little warm. And then uh, it cooled off a little bit there. Here's my first day of better life testing. Actually, this isn't my first full day. This was just showing some um, some drainage here. And this is 7 hours, 23 minutes off the charger. We're at an hour and 37 minutes of screen on time. So we're looking pretty good here, actually. And we still had 82% battery life left. Uh, this was actually me sending a screenshot to uh, Droid Master on the forum uh, to discuss the, this particular uh, system UI crash and send him a log cat and I wanted to go ahead and justify and say hey uh, you know uh, it, I am actually pretty impressed with the start of the battery life on this ROM so that's what that was. Here's the continuation of that draining test we're at 17 hours and 35 minutes off the charger if you look down here you'll see the awake times and the screen on times they are pretty dead on um, there's a couple times you see a couple wake ups that the screen was not on but not very many at all it's said to say that uh, the wake lock blocker works really well. Four hours and 40 minutes of screen on time. These are my wake locks here. And I'll go ahead and show that graph again. We still had, well, that was 20 something percent battery life. So, I mean, very nice. Scrolling through here, wake lock blocker, I already showed you those. Another battery drain test, 13 hours, 18 minutes, 39 seconds. And again, You'll see down here, I may have had a few more awake times, but not a whole lot. Uh, two hours and 58 minutes this time of screen on time. But I also had an hour and 20 minutes of voice calls. It seemed like voice calls really drained the battery. Oh, that's not part of the tests. But anyways, continuing on. And again, this is me checking the temperatures again because I can feel the phone getting warm while doing regular tasks. 66 degrees. Another battery drain test, here we go, 27% battery life left with 12 hours, 19 minutes, and 39 seconds off the charger. Again, that's 27% left. And we had 3 hours and 24 minutes of screen on time, so this is pretty good here. Um, we could have easily, easily, looking at how much battery life was left here, we could have easily squeezed another hour and a half, it's safe to say. Here is another battery drain test. I did do a reboot here because I enabled Omni Switch, and for Omni Switch to actually start working, you have to reboot the phone. If you look here, you see these little spikes. These are just errors in battery accuracy reporting because if you look down here at charging, there is no charging. So those little spikes, they weren't from charging. They were just from inaccurate battery reporting. Scrolling through, we got 3 hours and 53 minutes of screen on time. 8% battery life left. So this wasn't the best drain test, but I still got 4 hours, roughly 4 hours. And here's my wake clocks. Here is your Antutu benchmark on ART. 32,689. And here is another quick uh, battery drain test from this morning, actually. One I'm not very impressed with. 57% battery life left. 12 hours and 1 minute off the charger. You can see we got some funky usage here. Some pretty heavy usage apparently is what the phone thinks it is, but uh, I didn't really do anything drastic. I've been a little candy crush there. Two hours and two minutes of screen on time. And again, 57% battery uh, battery life left. So this is probably on mark to get a little over four hours, but probably not five. And there was some exchange stuff going on there. I downloaded some attachments. So, you know, 
that may have contributed to the battery there. Overall, battery life did seem like it was better on Dalvik than Art. Um, it seemed like it. Uh, it seemed like for some odd reason I would get an extra half an hour, on average, looking at those battery drain tests. Here we go from the phone complete powered off. We're going to do a quick power on test. So, put the timer. Let that go and we'll talk about the forms right quick. It is only at 89 pages. Oh, pardon my big feet for that. 89 pages. I'm sorry, 89 posts, not pages. 89 posts, which is even better. Um, which means there's no reason why you really, really can't just check the forms uh, for your questions. They're, they're probably going to be there. Uh, 26 seconds, a little bit less. I might have been late pressing it. Um, Droid Master 92 does seem pretty involved with it. Uh, there's not a whole lot of activity in this form. Um, I think that not a lot of people are aware that there is a Dirty Unicorns build for this phone currently out that they can use. Uh, but once the word gets out, you're probably going to see a lot more people trying to use it. Because again, if you're looking for ROM that's chock full of features and really gives you a chance to pick what you like. Because if there's something you've seen from a ROM that you like, it's probably in this ROM. Um, then, yeah, there it goes. That was unusual. And there's your free RAM, 1.3 gigs, 1.2 gigs, I stand corrected, from the start. And it stays that way on a fresh reboot. Hopefully you found this video useful. I will say one more thing. Um, this does suffer from that proximity sensor issue during a phone call. So if you're on a phone call and your phone's to your ear, you do hear that clickety, clickety, clickety sound sometimes as it seems like the phone's trying to turn the screen off to turn back on or whatnot, like it's knocking on, knocking off. And uh, then when you end the phone call and you pull the phone away from your face, it doesn't turn the phone screen back on. Not a big deal. You just got to double tap it or press the back power button. And, you know, no harm, no foul. It's just that uh, once you've gotten used to being able to just pull it away and turn it back on, it's just something that you notice. Other than that, this has been a, a pretty good ROM. Uh, I would say it's not the best. At this point, I hope to see some stability changes and some updates and some fixes uh, in the future. I have shared my log cats and they are available, so hopefully um, they can reveal some information that maybe I wasn't able to see when I looked at them as far as what exactly was causing these problems. It's the same apps I'm using on these other ROMs, the OnePlus One ROM, the Allergen ROM. Um, you know, this, these are the same apps I use and the same apps that I test and don't have the same crashes. So I have to believe it's ROM related. If you found this video useful, give it a thumbs up. If you have any questions, feel free to ask. Always keep a baseband backup or baseline backup, I should say. Uh, very minimal apps, uh, very minimal customizations, if any, so that I can go back and test for you. Hope you found this video useful. Thanks.